Hello again and welcome to another Reaper tutorial. Uh, today I wanted to show you how to get your audio to sit closer to the grid when you have a darn human who just can't play quite like a robot can. So let's dig in. And before we start, we're going to turn on overlap and crossfade items when splitting. This is in the Reaper preferences menu. This is something that saved me a lot of time when doing this kind of work. So under project, media item defaults, we're looking for this right here. Overlap and crossfade items when splitting. Set the length to uh, this right here. Make sure that is on. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to save us a lot of clicks when we're uh, when we're splitting. What that's going to do is it's going to save us a lot of clicks because we're going to have to crossfade the items anyway after the fact. So if it's doing it for us, that is helpful. Now the first method to getting things to lock into the grid better is called the slice and slip method. And this is what I use for recordings where I want to preserve the feel and the human quality of the performance. So to do this, I tend to look at my recording and slice out measures that look like they're ahead or behind the grid. So let's do that. So I'm going to turn the grid off so I can just do this a little bit quicker. And I like to split by the measure if I can. And this one doesn't look too, uh, too bad. So we'll split by measure. And then when you want to slip, I'm going to put the grid back on so I can see that. And when you can press Alt or Option on Mac and hold that down and then you can drag and you can move this wherever you want without moving the item itself. So if we zoom in a little bit, my goal is to get things a little bit closer to the grid. Uh, but as you can see, some things further on are now further away from the grid. So you may have to make some other splits in there. So moving some things a little bit, making other splits if I need to, pushing them a little bit further and adjusting some of the crossfades if I need to. So as you can see, this is a little bit tedious. You do have to go uh, measure by measure this way, but what you end up with, um, let's take a listen to the original track. And now the edited track. So it's sitting a little bit closer to where the click is. It's still not perfect, but to me, I like that quality more so than something that's completely locked into the grid for this. But uh, let's see what that would look like if we wanted to lock completely into the grid. So the second method is one where we use dynamic split and quantize. And this is what I'd use if I'm more concerned with things lining up precisely on downbeats. Uh, it makes layering other tracks on top of it a lot easier, but you might lose some of that feel and human quality that you've got with the other method. So the first thing we're going to do is select the item that we want to adjust and press D. And that'll open up the dynamic split items window. And take a look at my settings here. I'm not sure if they're exactly the defaults. Uh, but they should be close. But with just all default settings, something is wrong. We're not actually seeing all the transients be marked. So these dotted lines here will show us where the splits are going to happen. And there are not a lot of them. So we're going to adjust that. And you can do this. Um, you may have to do it for whatever you're working on, but by going to set transient sensitivity. So it's not the worst thing in the world if you don't have all the transients. What is bad is if you have way too many. So if I increase the sensitivity to 100, you can see now that uh, there are five transients in here, and that'll split that into five different things, which is not what we want. So keeping that around 50 or maybe a little bit lower is usually good. I find that I often have to turn the threshold down a little bit to make this work though. So we're still getting a few extra transients we don't want. That's looking better. So this is pretty good. You can find that pretty quickly usually. It's not going to work for everything, but that's working for us right now. Now we can split these items at the transients and we've got every individual guitar strum separated out. So here's what that looks like. Ta-da! And now that everything's separated, we're going to select all of the items here if they're not already selected. And 
go to our actions menu, which is shift question mark, and look for quantize item positions to grid. I have this as a shift Q shortcut. I'm not sure if that's default, but that is a good shortcut for that. So you can press shift Q and a menu will pop up and you'll see this here. There's a lot of different options here and they all have different uses. So I'm going to use 16th notes because that's what this project needs. I'm going to select extend starts of items to overlap with earlier items. And the 30 milliseconds, I believe, is the default. This will help because it won't sound choppy. It works for acoustic guitar, but sometimes if you're working with other things, you'll get a double attack. So just be wary of that. There's this option, shorten earlier items if quantized items overlap by more than however many milliseconds. This is something that's good if you are getting any double hits when you do this, uh, especially with drum tracks. And then lastly, quantize item ends and stretch item to fit. I don't have a good use case for this yet, but uh, it will distort the sound a bit if you're going to stretch it. So I don't use it here because this is a very clean acoustic recording. So now all you have to do is click process and your track will automatically lock to the grid. So now that we've done that, let's hear the difference between these two tracks. So these are the two methods I use most often. Uh, you can feel free to use either one when the project calls for them. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial helped you reap the benefits of Reaper. Uh, bye.